Okay, so we're going to talk about, this is Vanessa's high-level overview of professional services marketing, okay? So we're not getting into the nitty-gritty today. I'm not teaching her about our CRM software. I'm not teaching her about LinkedIn for lead generation. I'm not teaching her about any of that. I'm just kind of giving her an overview, okay? We are also not talking about proposals today. Okay, so this is more of a marketing. So people use marketing and business development as two different terms. Okay, for me, marketing is more like branding and awareness, and it's like all the stuff that happens before you get an actual deal. Business development is like when you're cultivating an actual uh, specific opportunity proposal. Okay. So marketing is like, you meet somebody at a lunch, hey, who are you, what do you do, well, here's what we do. Business development is they call you two weeks later and say, hey, uh, we're looking to team up on a project, would you guys be interested, okay? Okay, so here's what we're gonna talk about. What's the differences between what they call B2B marketing and B2C, the business to business and business to consumer, okay? Because you need to understand the differences. We are B2B, we are business to business, we are not business to consumer, okay? Professional services is a type of B2B. It's a subcategory of B2B. Okay? So, what does Vanessa need to know before she's at a dinner meeting or a lunch meeting or rubbing shoulders with someone at a conference? Okay? She needs to know about our brand. Okay? In other words, what do we stand for? Okay? So, for example, when I tell you, well, we'll talk about it. She's going to talk about our niche. What is it that we do? What do we not do? we we'll talk about that a little bit, but I want to make sure she understands, okay? And then, because I know she wants to sell everything to everybody, we're going to talk about why focus is important, okay? Okay, then we're going to talk about some advantages we have over other companies when it comes to marketing, okay? So that's social proof, our technical know-how, our experience, and our clear value proposition, okay? So Vanessa needs to understand all that before she sells. Okay, and part of what I'm trying to do, Vanessa, I didn't think about this till you told me like, like I, I haven't prepared you, you need to be prepared. Right, so I'm trying to make sure you're prepared for those conversations. Okay, and here's what I want. It's important for Vanessa to understand most of the people that work in marketing for professional services are not technical people. Right? They know they know enough to have some conversations, right. but like they're not licensed professionals. Of a, of a yeah. Yes. Not be my... Yes, that's true. Okay, so we're gonna talk about some of the differences between B2C and B2B marketing. Okay, so B2C is what they call business to consumer. Okay, that is companies that want to sell individual consumer stuff. Okay, a pair of shoes, laundry detergent four-wheel drive SUV, dog bones, okay? So, B2C has low customer acquisition costs, okay? That means it doesn't usually cost very much to get a customer, okay? So, it's pennies or dollars per customer to acquire a customer, okay? Are you saying, like, same thing, like, if we print all these coupons, we can easily get a so customer like, out of it? So look, if, if you're a laundry detergent company, right, your cost to acquire an average customer is in the dollars or the cents. It's three dollars a customer. Oh, you're talking about the, the they profit money, rate. The month, no, I'm no. talking about the money they spend on marketing oh. per customer. It's typically low. It has to be low. Because their product's low. Because you have low profit per transaction. Right. Okay, so low customer acquisition costs, so just a few dollars per customer, okay, or a few cents per customer. They're low risk transactions. How much time do I think about, how much time do I spend researching what dish soap I'm gonna buy? Close to zero. So they're low risk transactions, because if I buy a bottle of dish soap or a thing of spaghetti sauce and I don't like it, what do I do? Get rid of it. Well, next time I just buy something different, right? It's low risk, okay? So it's not worth it to spend two days on the internet researching dish soap, because if I don't like the one I buy, I'll try a different one, okay? They're typically low profit transactions. What's the amount of profit on a bottle of just soap? 70 cents? Yeah, cents, probably. Okay. And this 
this type of transaction is best suited for mass market. Okay, so TV advertisements. How many people buy dish soap? How many American households buy dish soap? All of them. Almost all of them. How many American households buy dog bones? Mm. A bunch, a huge Isn't amount. All? Not all, but I don't know, 50%? Okay, how many American households buy a vehicle every 10 years? Almost all of them. So, does it make sense to buy an ad on the Super Bowl for new cars? No. If you're a car company, does it make sense to buy a Super Bowl ad? I, I'm going to say no, just because they have to buy one every 10 years anyway. So no, what are you going to yeah. advertise for? No, it is. It's suited <laughs> for mass market. Am I going to advertise our business on the Super Bowl ad? No. No, because no, it's hugely expensive, and how many people watching that actually right. need a survey? It's not suited for mass it's market. More food and it's just the same thing with like if you sell fur coats. You know, if you sell real fur coats, are you going to advertise on the super on the Super Bowl? No, it's not your it's not no. your thing. It, well, that's a small the, the amount of American households that buy real fur coats. What is that? One percent? Two percent? So, most business to business transactions have higher customer acquisition costs. So, if you're going to sell somebody a new fleet fleet maintenance plan or uh, you know, their new desktop computers, or, you know, uh, you're Boeing and you're selling an airline, a new fleet of jets, that's high customer acquisition costs. It costs a lot to get, a lot more than the B2C, okay? Part of the reason why it costs more to get the customers is because those are higher risk transactions. If you're an airline and you're trying to figure out what your next fleet, your next 50 airplanes are going to be, and you make the wrong choice, how big of a deal is that? A big deal. That's a big friggin' deal. So you're really careful. Okay? So way more research. Okay? But the transactions are also higher profit. You know, you make 70 cents on a bottle of dish soap, you make $1.5 million on every new airliner you sell. Every new airline, airplane you sell to an airline. Okay? So way higher profit transactions. Okay? This is not suited for mass market. This is, you're speaking to a narrow or niche audience. How many people in the world are in charge of buying airplanes? A hundred? I don't know, 200, a thousand? That's a small number, right? It's a very, what we call a narrow market. It's not a broad market. Okay, so let's look down here. As the risk in the transaction goes up for the purchaser, the amount of research they do also goes up. Okay, so let me just give you an example. If Maddie needed heart surgery. No, you don't. That's a bad example. Okay, if she needed heart surgery, okay, how much time would you spend picking the surgeon? Would you go with the cheapest guy? No. No, you do some research because how much risk is there? That's a high risk transaction, right? Okay. Okay, over here, the amount of money you spend to acquire a customer. Okay, is directly related to the lifetime value they bring to your business, right? So as the lifetime value of the customer goes up, the acquisition cost goes up. Okay, so let me explain that because this, this applies to why I don't do lot surveys. Okay, so here's what I want you to remember. If you buy a house and, and want a survey, how many times, how many times does the average homeowner in America Need you're a survey. Re, yeah, you're running reoccurring clients, reoccurring yeah. business. So how many times? Is, one, yes. One one pop. Money. So we want to be B two B. We are B two B. We don't. Oh yeah, right. That's why I don't do so lot does surveys. That mean you what what are lot surveys? Is lot surveys B two B or B two C? C. B two C. B two C. Okay. So it's here's like you're doing a wedding. What yes. are the odds of them getting but, married again? Yeah. Yeah. But right. isn't the odds of that auto so, company and Tracy needing you again a C? Okay, but so this is really important. So, um, so Monique said, what about the auto dealership in Tracy? Here's the difference. That job I'm doing for a land attorney. How many times is he going to need a survey? Mm -hmm. okay? So what happens is whenever you deal with middlemen, mm -hmm. you take this problem, this problem here away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? What problem? That problem of... Oh, risk. Okay, so that's why, that's why... Dominic I, is your lifetime value. Yes, that's why I might do a lot survey for a real estate broker, but I don't, wouldn't want to do it for an individual homeowner. Mm. Because how many surveys is the real estate broker going to... What's their lifetime value? It's going to be a real estate. So okay. if Vanessa's is out there, we have to be sure they understand the marketing aspect that we don't do that. So here's the thing. If I'm going to do a lot survey, I'm not saying we won't ever do it, but if I'm going to do a B2C survey, what am I going to be willing to spend on the acquisition? Yeah, not very much. 
Like, I'm not going to spend four days and $5,000 doing their proposal and monkeying around with them because what's the lifetime value? It's not enough. Is, yeah, I'm gonna it, give you, is I'm, it a waste of time? Yes. Unless I'm gonna, it was dominant, yes. right? Unless I, there was a middleman, right. a broker of some right, kind that right, we were right. working with. And then, the, so I'm going to give you an example of something that my last company did that was stupid. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, there was a local county that had what they call an on-call contract. In other words, they were putting together a list of consultants. Okay? So the max value for the on-call contract, I believe, was $100,000 over two years. So the most work you were going to get out of that contract was $100,000. Okay? And most government contracts limit your profit to 10%. Okay? So if you get the 100 k worth of work, what's the most profit you're going to get out of that contract? 10% of 100 k Okay, yeah, you're... 10K. Okay? Okay, now here's the stupid part. This is why my company didn't think this through. Most proposals that you have to put together for government agencies are a nightmare, right? They want all kinds of information. Like the ones that all we the did the Yeah, the ones you did with Gaia. Yeah. All the projects you oh, worked on gosh. the last five years and resumes oh, for yeah, okay? Yeah. So look, my company spent five days of staff time put together the proposal. How then we got... How many staff? Just one. Let's say one day, okay? okay? Then we got shortlisted to do the proposal. So we had to prep for an interview. So we had two days of interview prep. Okay, so that... And there was four people on the panel. So that was eight days plus an admin. So that was ten days of staff time. Okay, and so let's just figure out where our average hourly rate is. Okay, so our average hourly rate in that room was probably 200 bucks an hour. Okay, so 200 times 8 is 1600 So $1,600. Okay, so 1600 times 15 So let's see what it costs them to put that proposal together. Wow. To put the proposal together and go to the interview. Unless, of course, we have our, our, our stuff organized. Like yeah, but, but even then, it's got to be, be tailored. It's got to be tailored for each. Yeah, a little bit. Right? Yeah. So 1600 times 15 So here's what they spent. And we got, we got, we won the contract, but here's what they spent to get the contract. How much was the contract for? 100 k they limit your profit to 10%. What were we going to make? They spent 24 grand. To get a, 10, a profit with a contract with $10,000 of profit, okay? And the county shortlisted every company that proposed. So they shortlisted like seven firms, okay? So are we getting the whole 100K? No, take the 100K and divide it by four. If we're really good, we might get 25%. So listen, they spit on the proposal the total dollar value they're going to get out of the contract. Oh my God. So how smart was this? Somebody didn't think that through. They didn't get thought through. So So what? Now, when you see, okay, so when you see a $100,000 $100, job like that. If it's a government contract and they, they tell you in the proposal, you are only going to make a hundred grand, and we're going to limit you to ten percent profit. You better not spend more than a couple thousand dollars putting that proposal together, or you're wasting your time. Because when they say time. that they're going to limit you, that means that they're going to put more than one person. Like no, it person. just means they will not, by law, let you have more than ten percent profit. Is that why they shortlist? Is so they they that someone else can pick up the work that you're maxed out on for your ten percent? Yeah, if you get if you get to hundred k, they'll give that work to another firm. Yeah. Okay. Potentially, but. So what does it mean, shortlisted? What Short, mean? Shortlisted means you get to go in for an interview. Oh, okay. Okay? So at the time of being shortlisted, somebody should have looked at the job, how much we were Now, paying. the only reason to do this is if you think you're going to get, by doing this two years for the county, you're going to get what? More work? Yeah. That's the only reason to do it. Or is it worth the money? Well, isn't it good to have a county job on your portfolio for well, longer? It just depends on if you think you're going to get more of that work. And like, you know, listen, if you're buddies with somebody at the county and you know if you go in for this two years that you'll get the next two years, then, then you might, or there's other work you're going to get because of that. I don't think it was the case. I think these guys were just chomping at the bit to get work and they didn't do the math. Okay, so this is a good illustration of why acquisition costs and lifetime value of the client are important. Do I want to spend five grand chasing a $6,000 survey? No. That's why we're not going to be in the B2C business.
as well, a general rule. We wouldn't really be up for any of those jobs because they're mostly union, right? What job? The one, um, the, uh, the one you're talking about, like for the city when we would have. It's not to union, but we're not doing government work. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Is so no government work either? Nope. I'm going to explain that in a minute. Unless there's a really special circumstance. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. right? We're just like, we're kind of, we're getting a little limited here. Yeah, we we might not. We, and there's, there's a reason. We might not be able to do demo. Okay, well, I don't want to talk about that in the middle of my oh, marketing video. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. So, do you understand the difference between B2C and B2B? Okay. 